Do you believe having more money, more wealth, and more financial success has to come at the expense of something meaningful to you? Hello, 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 and welcome to More Than Money, a podcast where we have nuanced conversations about money, business, and life, where we take the time to explore the human side of money because success with money is never just about the numbers. I'm your host, Jacquette Timmons, and I am really, really glad that you are here with me today. Whether this is your very first episode or one of many, thank you. Thank you for tuning in, however you do, wherever you do, whenever you do. And before we get into today's episode, I want to share with you a question that I posed on social media, and it is this. Three months from now, will you be pleased with your results? Will you be pleased with the actions that you took and the choices that you made today? If you said, hmm, I'm not sure, then let's talk. Send me a DM on Instagram because we can chat all about that. But in the meantime, let's get into today's show. Talking about spirituality and money is not a common request that I receive when I am asked to speak. Most likely, this is because it is an intersection that is just not often discussed in the financial services industry in general, or a topic that my corporate and law firm clients wish to delve into. So I was both excited and nervous when Karen Hunter, host of the Karen Hunter Show on Sirius XM, and oh, by the way, the producer of this podcast, invited me to speak on this profound intersection at the retreat that she hosts each year, Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise. I was nervous because while I do believe there is an inner dimension to your success, to my success, and especially when it comes to money, it's a conversation that I have in smaller containers, right? I have it with friends. I have it with colleagues. I have it with some clients. Facilitating a conversation of this nature for nearly 200 people, well, That was a new experience, not the number of people, but the topic for that number of people. And I was excited for a couple of reasons. First, it is so in alignment with one of my missions, right? And that is um, changing the narrative of what we talk about when we talk about money. And so one of the reasons that I was excited about this is because when I started talking about the concept of having a relationship with your money, and this is now going back three decades, it was considered woo-woo. Not something someone with an MBA in finance would champion. After all, the industry is driven, you know, predominantly by the focus on the numbers, the tangible and the measurable metrics that you can easily track and quite frankly, more easily talk about. So back then, I was actually considered an outlier in the personal finance space. But now fast forward to today or more recent times. Now you have big commercial banks jumping on the bandwagon, running national advertising campaigns about the value of improving your relationship with money. Finally. (laughs) finally, they recognize that a lot of what you and I do or don't do when it comes to money is deeply connected to our relationship with it. And this acknowledgement reflects a shift on their part. They are now embracing the fact that the emotional and the psychological aspects of money play a crucial role in personal finance. And if you are wondering, yes, when I am in a petty mood, I will sometimes you know, make comments like, well, hmm, it took them long enough. Or I'll give a little bit of a side eye when I see a social media influencer make it, you know, make it seem as if this is an entirely new realm of money when it is something that I've been advocating since 
the 90s, but I digress. Here's the other reason why I was excited. Again, facilitating a conversation um, like this really represented an opportunity to expand the narrative of what we talk about when we talk about money, wealth, and success, especially since so much of the messaging around money is traditionally centered around the idea of, well, just follow the rules. You know those rules. Pay yourself first. Spend less than you earn. Have minimal to no debt. Invest. And if you've been around here long enough, you know that this way of thinking and talking about money just drives me bonkers. And it does so because it conveys the idea that success with money is just about the numbers. And in some circles, it can even come across as if the pursuit of financial success and the pursuit of wealth can only be achieved at the expense of something meaningful to you. And that's something meaningful. It may look like any or all of, you know, the following, like your personal values, like your health, be it your physical, your mental, your emotional, or even your spiritual health, like how you work or want to work. That something could also leave you feeling like you have to discount your soul in some way in order to get what you want. And this can lead a lot of people, and maybe I'm speaking to you when I say these words, this can lead a lot of people believing that the only way to have more money, to have more wealth and more financial success is if part of the process doesn't feel good. And you know what doesn't feel good? When you are actually following all of the rules, yet you are still not experiencing the success that you want. Or those times when your current responsibilities exceed your current resources, and you just simply do not have the capacity to do any more than what you are currently doing right now. Or here's another one, when you eventually realize that the additional information that you've gathered, it didn't create the magical solution that you had hoped for. Any or all of these things can result in success feeling out of reach and the process of pursuing wealth downright terrible. But I suspect that you want to feel good instead, right? Now, here's where it gets a little tricky because the same thing that makes talking about money in general challenging also applies to talking about spirituality and money too. And that is, it is deeply personal and it is multifaceted. Yet I do feel confident emphasizing here on this podcast episode, the same thing that I did during my talk at the retreat. And that is that I believe that you want money and financial success that does feel good. Will it be challenging at times? Of course. What aspect of life isn't challenging at times? But you want it overall to feel good. You want wealth that feels good. From my perspective, though, to get there, you have to do a couple of things. One, you have to be introspective so that you can actually tap into what is your personal definition of spiritual and identify the ways in which you see that definition playing out and how you think, approach, manage, and feel about money and your choices. You also have to use a different equation for financial success, one that goes beyond the numbers and intentionally integrates your vision and your values. You need to unmask some of your beliefs about money, which ones are cultural and stem from your family upbringing and background, and which ones have you adopted as an adult because of the consequences that you are living out from past choices. You also need to be curious about your current relationship with money. What influences it? And how does this affect the financial and non-financial choices that you make? And then lastly, you have to take a holistic approach to money. 
so that you can view wealth as a multidimensional concept that isn't just confined to financial assets. And since you've listened to me thus far, thank you. Perhaps that means that my mission of getting people to focus on their relationship with money is something that resonates with you. I hope though that you know that doesn't mean discounting the quantitative aspects of money because the numbers do indeed matter. You need to be honest with yourself about what your numbers are as well as what you want them to be. And from my perspective, honoring the inner dimensions of money doesn't mean bypassing the numbers because this is not an either or proposition. It's more both and. Therefore, if you want to make more informed choices, if you want to feel less stress and more calm about those choices, and if you want to be prepared for when life throws you that unexpected, you know, monkey wrench, because it will, you'd benefit greatly from integrating the inner dimensions of money with the quantifiable or the outer dimensions of it. Plus, leaning into the value of your inner wealth reminds you that personal insight will always, and I do mean always, be greater than any information you can gather from Google or ChatGPT, no matter how good those channels, those vehicles are for synthesizing a plethora of information that will never be greater than the personal insight that you gain. So in that vein, I want to leave this episode and share with you a three-part question to ponder. And it is a question that I shared at the retreat. The first part of the question begins here. What were your earliest memories of yourself? Meaning, when did you first feel insecure? When did you first feel not enough? When did you first feel different? At the retreat, I shared the very first time that I felt different. The second part of the question is, what was your earliest memory or maybe a lesson as it pertains to money in general and wealth more specifically? And then the third part of that question is, how do these memories play out today? How do you see them in terms of how you relate to money, how you relate to money in the context of work, in the context of the relationships that are important to you, in the context of your dreams and your visions and the things you do and you don't do? I ask this question at the retreat and I'm asking it here because there is a thread between what you are doing today and those memories. And it is a thread that is definitely worth exploring because of the insight that you will gain as evidenced by the stories that people shared that were deeply personal, that were powerful, and that definitely impacted all of us that were in that room. I hope that this three-part question is one that you will consider and take the time to answer I hope that you will use those insights from your answer to help you achieve your goals this year and beyond and improve something about your financial well-being. I also hope that you will share your answer with someone because you just never know how it may bless them too. And finally, I hope today's episode helps you to lay the foundation to have more money, to have more wealth, and to have more financial success and in a way that leaves you feeling good. Well, that is it for today, folks. And as always, thank you for listening. If you'd like to show appreciation for this podcast or maybe this particular episode, please share it so that we can reach more people. And if you happen to be listening on Apple Podcasts, please take a moment to leave a rating and a review. A, we do read them, but B, it will help us with, you know, the whole algorithm thing. And if you are on YouTube, please leave a comment below. We'd love to check that out as well. And finally, if you'd like to buy me a coffee, here's how you can do that. Buymeacoffee.com forward slash Jaquette. Buymeacoffee.com forward slash Jaquette. I'll be back with another episode. I hope that you will too. Until then, remember, it's about more than money.